There are times I stand alone Even when I've done no wrong But oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Stand by me with unbelieving 
is right. We can very much well understand that even in this day and this time, we still, from over 2,000 years ago, we still have problems with unbelievers. Because we look back and this pride verbs and reading from that verse five, and it was saying the wise men will hear and will increase learning. A wise man will increase his learning. I believe that if we are wise and understand God's will, we will understand that to find out about God is to increase our learning. Any time an individual looks and wants to know about anything, wants to know about its existence and how it operates or what feeling this individual must be in to accomplish its study about its substance or, or find out about uh, how it operates, they must first do research. If they are interested in trying to find out about a particular thing, because of the particular thing they want to understand so they can apply it to their lives. We must, to find out about God, we must understand that we got to do research and understand what his true purpose is all about. Anybody that has done their research will understand that God's God's purpose is to bring his people to himself. To bring them in to understand your pain. 
your confusion, your misunderstanding. God will send that individual to you just for that brief moment so you can come from that distraction that's causing you not to understand its purpose. You know, from the Bible tells us that the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. That's the beginning of wisdom. It's to fear God first. By fearing God first, you will obtain counseling of the Spirit. We know that when Jesus, when he departed from this world, he said, I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you a counselor. If we have the patience, if we have the ability to be steadfast and unmovable and wait on God, go upon our daily life, living as though it were not being bothered by the things that are around us, but waiting on God to apply counseling to our circumstances. We can, most of the time, look for counseling in You can't find counseling that will counter you for a great amount of time. Because if we are counting on people, they will sooner or later burn out and run out of words to say. Then they will lean more to their own understanding, their own point of view, that will ultimately, ultimately confuse you. But if we, through the Spirit, hear our answer from that individual, Daily lives, and that would be all we need. It is proverbs. It instructs us to fear God, to wait for him to be instructed in wisdom because it will bring stability and it will freeze opportunities for good. It also talks about the terms of a young man is used for not just the young man individually, but it talks about, it ranges from birth on up to 
in his twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, on up to basically to the day you die. Because we know that back in the Old Testament, that people back in that time was living on over into the 500s and 700 years old. We now in this day and time, we were dying at a young age. The reason I say a young age is because from our daily living, we that we live, it, it extended to the extent over to our children. What we do in the past, we're going to come back to hunt us. It'll come back and present itself before us and our children. If we are living a great clean life, it will reflect itself on into our children. That's why it's important for us to live a good clean life, a good righteous life. A good caring life. A caring life for us to understand that whatever we do, it will reflect on the way to our children. And most of the time, when it reflects on the way to our children, It reflects, and we have parents today that take a parent home, homes that they are trying to raise their child by themselves because of one individual that can't find the time to take the time to have raised that child. You know, my older generation used to always tell me that anybody can lay down and conceive a child. But it takes a real conceiver to be there to raise that child. You know, we look back into our lives today. We can see generations of tax homes. But I'm here to tell you today that it don't have to be that way. We can right today take our life and turn it around. Turn it around and start to trust in God. Start to believe in God. Start to join God's commandments. Because to fear the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But only, uh, the Bible says, only a fool despise the wisdom and instruction of the Lord. Because we 
we are being instructed by who among the spoken from under the Bible. It's a proof, so I'm saying proof. So I hope nobody don't hold that against me. But only a person that follows the fool will find himself into a destruction of life. the fool can only lead you, can only teach you of his ways. It can lead you and cause you to stray from the Lord. Who has no direction? Who only thinking of himself his own increases of life. Sometimes the who will take in, use you and pull you in with his enticements. Then once he's got you in, he'll take his foot and step up over your head and use your head to lift himself up. That's what a who will do for you. God's people. Sometimes we take in, we go down the wrong road sometimes. Sometimes it's good people just looking for leadership that will find themselves This leadership, someone who can lead you to holiness, to the knowledge of God. God's knowledge is strength to the bones and caters to the full. That's why we as parents are to lead our children in righteousness. Sometimes we got to take off our ancestry ways of thinking, put on the robe of God, and teach our children the right way. That's why the Bible says to children, says to listen to the mother and wear the mother's words like an ornament. And that ornament would become grace and put our head in a chain about their neck. And it only, and only, and it is fair so too that it's fair as my son, if a sin entice thee, it's fair as contain not. Because the sinner can only set weight of blood and try to trap. And if you ain't careful, you'll be caught up in that same time. Because he's teaching you his ways. His ways is not God's ways. And God's ways is not his ways. That's why we got to be careful. Be steadfast and unmovable and God. A whole lot of times we have got 
the wrong information. We've heard the wrong things. And growing up in a young age, I can know I know when I was a little boy growing up in school. We would read and the books in school was telling us about how we was created. And those books told us that we were created by tadpoles. We grew up, we grew up from tadpoles and extended legs and started to grow arms and started to stand upright. We became human. History was wrong. History was wrong. The Bible was wrong. But I tell you today, brothers and sisters, that in the beginning of time, God created the heavens and the earth. He created everything that was in the earth. And the Bible says that God took dust from the ground and he created man. And when he created man, he stood man up and blew life into men. The Bible said that man was created in the image of God. Not one time have I read in the Bible ways where God took us from a tadpole made us grow legs and we grew arms and stood upright. We got to be careful about what our children are reading. Why is it that in our history books that we can't apply the Bible into history. Oh, we are so wrong. Why in our history books it don't read that in the beginning of kind of time that God created the heavens and the earth and everything that was in it. He took and he took and divided the waters. He divided the waters from within the mist and he created and divided the heaven from the earth. Then he took and he created plants and yielding seeds and then he created fish that could create other fish. Then he created animals and the grass of the ground and the blue skies. Then he took man and created man from the dust of the ground and man, he blew life into men. Why did the history couldn't tell us that we were made in the very image of God. All something is very wrong, my brothers and sisters. Or what our children are listening to. And true. God said that if you won't confess me in front of men, then I won't confess you 
and you present yourself in front of me in my kingdom. Oh, we are so twisted. Understand that he's fearing God. He think he's fearing the obstacles that's coming before him. So he starts to, when he starts to fear, he starts to rattling off. your rose garden and give you a dried up plant that's withered away and can't be revised. So be careful about who you follow and what you follow. Do research, learn about what's being said to you. Amen. Amen. And it be a blessing to the youth and the doers of God's word. Faith ministry, we, we're going to be going back uh, to the Old Testament. That's where we started from. I feel that Right now, I'm feeling that the Old Testament is calling you back. Back to the Old Testament. Because there's a whole lot of God's people that's waiting in the Old Testament to, to be brought back up and to the new. Some of God's people have stopped in the Old Testament. And I'm being called back to go back to the Old Testament to lead some of God's people out of the Old Testament. 
Testament on into the new. So we're going to, next week, we're going to be going back, back into the Old Testament. And I'm only hoping and praying that faith ministry followers will pray. Because we got we got to be obedient to the spirit. Because we left some people back in the old testament. And we're going back to get them. Amen. May we bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for this special time. And Father, we pray that, Father, as we go back to the Old Testament, that you give us understanding, give us the knowledge to bring your people back up to the New Testament so they can understand, Father, what is to come. So we pray, Father, and hope, Father, that you give us the strength, the knowledge to go back and teach from that Old Testament, dear Lord. Father, we thank you. We adore you. And we praise your holy name. Father, we ask for all these things in your gracious and loving and darling Son. We ask in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. To the next time, paid ministry. As we walk back into the Old Testament, this is paid ministry saying, stay.